that when, when the cross came, the new covenant would come and the Holy Spirit would move in. So here's, here's a timeline. This whole morning's been about this next five minutes. And I'm going to give you this and I'm going to close. Please watch this. This, this is an incredible, and I've tried to, to make it clean and understandable. Old Testament, there was these feasts and these dedications and these, these, these testimonials that God built throughout the Old Testament. There is the Passover. What's the Passover? Passover, lamb would be sacrificed. The perfect lamb of God is sacrificed. The blood is spilt. The paschal lamb is sacrificed and the blood is spilt. It is a picture of of the blood that was taken at the Passover in the Old Testament in Exodus, put on the doorpost so that the angel of death would pass over the children of God and not come in and kill the firstborn. If you are covered by the blood, you were safe. If you were not covered by the blood, you were not safe. They celebrate this with a feast called the Passover, and it began with a, the with a sacrifice of the Paschal Lamb. That's the Passover. Then one day later was started this Feast of Unleavened Bread. So you had the Passover. When it ends, one day later starts the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Well, what's that all about? Well, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the bread that God told him to prepare to take into the wilderness. There, there didn't, they didn't put any yeast in it. There was no sin in it. They wanted him to carry this bread that didn't have the representation of sin in it into the wilderness. Then, 1 Corinthians 15.20, but now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. Out here is Pentecost. Well, what is Pentecost? Pentecost is seven times seven days after the Feast of First Fruits, or the Festival of First Fruits, and it's 50 days, which was what Pentecost means. Pentecost means 50. 50 days after the, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay, you got that? So here's Pentecost out here. Now, why am I showing you all this? This is all laid out in Leviticus, the law that God gave his people. Why was this important? This became the ritual, listen to me, this became the tradition for the Old Testament people to learn something about God. What were they learning? What were they learning? They were learning all about God. What was he teaching them? He was teaching them about the Passover, the forgiveness of sins, the blood that had to be paid to pay for the price of their sins. He was talking about the, some kind of first fruits. What's that all about? Well, let's look at it. Passover was the day Christ was crucified. The Passover lamb, the perfect lamb of God, killed on the cross. His blood was spilt for you and me. At the Feast of First Fruits, this is the resurrection. Well, here's Sunday or excuse me, Friday, this is this next day, Saturday, and this day, Sunday, that's the day of the resurrection, the first fruits. Jesus said he was the first fruits of the resurrection. Guess what? That's the first fruit of the resurrection, meaning that we have a resurrection to look forward to. The first fruit of the resurrection. And out here at Pentecost, this was the time exactly that the Holy Spirit came. Pentecost the coming and the fullness of the harvest, the fullness of the harvest for you and I is the Holy Spirit moving in. Crucifixion, Passover, the, the sacrifice of the perfect Lamb of God. First fruits, the resurrection of Christ, come out of the grave. First fruits of the resurrection. Many more will be resurrected in the same manner. And Holy Spirit's coming for 50 days after that first part of this festival, Pentecost, 50 days, the Holy Spirit comes exactly 50 days after that. Jesus was the fulfillment, listen to me, Jesus is the fulfillment of all of these Old Testament feasts and festivals that have been taught by God to his people throughout all the years. He says, this is what's coming. This is what it's going to be like. This is the, you're going to practice what is actually going to take place when you do the Passover, when you do the Festival of First Fruits, when you do that wave offering, when you celebrate Pentecost. The coming of the Holy Spirit is going to come in that day. And he sets this whole thing up, and I don't think it's an accident that Jesus is crucified at Passover. 
I don't think it's an accident that the resurrection takes place at the place of first fruits. And Jesus already had said, there, I will be the first fruits of the resurrection. And I don't think it's an accident at all that the Holy Spirit comes to the apostles on the day of Pentecost, that's next week, Acts chapter 2, on that exact day, he gives them power from on high for the fullness of the harvest. And this is exactly when they would expect all those other harvests to come in, all the oats and all the other wheats and all the other kind of grains that they planted. The fullness of the harvest was expected to come in here and they would have a festival to celebrate it. God's faithfulness celebrated at the fullness of the harvest when the Holy Spirit comes. Remarkable picture. Pentecost was the day God began to offer His new covenant. Everything from Pentecost on is the same for us. Everything before Pentecost was a totally different age. Here's what I want you to see today. The New Testament, the new, let me say it this way, the New Covenant does not begin until Acts chapter 2. It didn't, it didn't start back in the beginning of the New Testament. Acts chapter 2 is when the new covenant begins. What's the new covenant? The Holy Spirit indwelling every believer. The Holy Spirit indwelling every single believer. 